Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back to another episode of Highway to Hell. And as promised, today we're going to take a look at Spirits of Vengeance, Spirit Rider. And this is a new book that came out through Marvel about a month ago, I think, or a little less than a month ago. And it's written by Taboo from the Black Eyed Peas and then also B. Earl. And we had mentioned Taboo uh, not too long ago in one of our uh, Comic-Con episodes when we were covering the panels that were at Comic-Con. And I was saying how interested I was in checking out you know like um native american lore being brought into marvel comics like more of that obviously there's been a ton of that before but just seeing you know more of it coming back in i just always been infatuated with native american stories and lores like wendigo and things like that and so when i heard that taboo was writing a ghostwriter one shot i thought you know what i might try that out even though it seems like something that's not really up my alley on one level on another level it does seem kind of interesting so what he did was they took this character named uh, kushala and she's from uh, she was recently popped up in a doctor strange comic book uh, i can't remember what issue i think it was like number 10 or 11 or maybe 12 or something like that and she popped up and she was pulled from the past from like the 1800s and in her time period she was corrupted by a spirit of vengeance, so kind of like a ghost rider, but, but not fully a ghost rider. And then I think she also became a, her era's Sorcerer Supreme. So obviously in every generation or so, there's a Sorcerer Supreme, like a Doctor Strange, and there's been a bunch of ghost riders before. So I guess she was kind of both. And you know how I feel about stuff like that. I don't like when uh, characters are just power stacking or given too much, you know, without like fully earning it. And I think her thing was that she was already mystical because she, you know, she like with her connection to her tribe and who she was with, she, I think she already kind of had a, a draw towards the mystic side of, of things. But um, also her tribe was killed and murdered in the 1800s and that uh, brought, like lured a spirit of vengeance toward her because she wanted vengeance. So she kind of is like the mixing of the two. Again, I'm not a big fan of mixing of the two, you know, mixing multiple things like that uh, just for the sake of it um, or to make someone more powerful. I'm not a big fan of that. But um, that's what was set up. But what I like that Taboo and B. Earl did here was they, they do start with that because that's who the character is when they as they're inheriting the character. But they kind of streamline the character to be one thing by the end of this and that is a spirit writer. So something that's kind of newer and in between uh, something like a spirit of vengeance or a, a sorcerer supreme and kind of its own thing. So I, I liked that. That's the evolution of this. And we are going to get into some spoilers here and we're going to discuss the book. It's not like a full just review. Uh, but for those of you who don't want that, you know, turn away now. Go check out the book for yourself and come back after if you want to hear my thoughts on it or as we discuss it. But also if you want to get a free copy of it, boom, there's a digital code. First person to put that code in gets a copy of the book. And if you do get the code, read it yourself and let me know your thoughts of it down in the comments down below. Um, but yeah, first person use it. So once that code is used, no one else can use it. So, you know, rush, go, go, go to that website, put that code in and get a, get, you know, get a free comic book. And I do that a lot on this channel. So if you're new here, make sure you subscribe. And anytime I review new Marvel comics, I try to get out, uh, give out the digital codes if they contain them. Um, so this book, I have good and bad with this book. Um, the artwork I actually found intriguing. It grew on me. I didn't love it at first, but it kind of grew on me. The writing is where it's 50-50 uh, because the book starts off and it's like a ton of narration from Kashala. And uh, but you don't see Kashala. You're, you're seeing uh, Johnny Blaze lose his temper and, or, you know, the, his soul or something is corrupted after being the king of hell and stuff. And uh, and so now he's, you know, lashing out to take out New York City or something like that. And then it cuts to a coffee shop in Burbank, California. <laughs> this is what I hate about a lot of modern comics is that, um, you know, a lot of it's done in L.A. and written in L.A. and stuff. And, um, you know, I lived in L.A. for a long time. And uh, but still what they do is they they'll set things purposely in L.A. and they'll have everyone do, you know, stupid L.A. stuff, <laughs> which I guess in some Marvel comics they did. You know, they're like in New York, they're in a coffee shop and that's kind of stupid New York stuff, I guess. Um but it irritates me sometimes with this because it's like they have Kashala. She's in modern day now and she's having breakfast with these two friends who I guess know that she's, you know, has powers and is from a different time era and stuff. And as they're talking, you know, Johnny Blaze and Dr. Strange just walk in and it's just normal. They don't really show reactions from other people in the, the restaurant or anything like that. And they kind of just glaze over that. Because they just want to show that, hey, it's it's cool, it's hip in L.A. to just like, you know, no celebrities and no, you know, in this case, no superheroes. And they just sit at your table and you hang out and you talk to them and it's and it's no one's going to bat an eyelash. Or some lady, I think, accidentally spills coffee on uh, 
uh, you know, the, the waitress spills coffee on uh, Johnny Blaze's hand or something like real quickly. But I kept thinking that was a setup to something that maybe it would be the, she wasn't really a, a waitress and something would happen later. And maybe everyone and all the patrons in this restaurant were actually demons and it was going to reveal that they were demons. I kept waiting for something like that to happen and nothing did. So this book played with my expectations a little bit because I was like, there's no way this is just a boring scene where people talk in a coffee shop and then they go into the bathroom and teleport to New Mexico or Arizona. I think they go to Arizona. And, uh, and turns out that's exactly what it was. And I got a little miffed by that. Cause I'm like, God dang, I, I hate that with modern comics. Like people are always like, let's sit down and like hang out and chat. And it, to me, that always worked in like a Spider-Man comic because it was set in New York and like Peter would go meet Mary Jane for coffee or something like that. I'm not saying it should never happen. I'm just saying the amount of people sitting down and talking, <laughs> I see it so much in comic books now, uh, where I'm like, all right, like, and it, and it always goes for like three or four pages. I'm like, okay, you're going to do this. Make it like one or two pages, like condense it. Just half of this dialogue doesn't matter. <laughs> and like, I, I don't know. So there was just things like that in this book where I was like, get to it. Uh, because what was frustrating for me is that it is a comic book. You do want some action. You do want things like that. So we have to see this, you know, uh, two page, three page, uh, you know, story or two and a half page story where they're in a coffee shop, which, okay, two and a half pages, like it's not horrible. But when I was reading the dialogue, I'm like, who really cares about her and these friends? Um, especially when at the end, she doesn't even say goodbye to the friends. She just tells Dr. Strange, hey, go say goodbye to my friends for me. And you're like, so did they not matter to you? <laughs> like, it's, it's like, so don't write your characters to be L.A. douchebags. <laughs> like when you're an L.A. douchebag, because that's such an L.A. thing to do is like not, you know, the Irish goodbye or something or whatever. And it's like, oh, what? I don't know. Just um, so I'm going off on a tangent. But basically, because we got that coffee shop scene, we couldn't, we didn't get a scene where Johnny Blaze and Doctor Strange fight, because apparently Doctor Strange is the one who stops uh, Johnny Blaze, and he tells them about it instead of showing it, uh, and that's what is drives me nuts with this. Like to me, you could have showed two more pages of Doctor Strange stopping Johnny Blaze, saying, "Okay, we have a problem," and then Doctor Strange going, "Wait a minute, there's something in you that I recognize," and then Johnny's like, "What?" and then boom, cut to Arizona. And then have her already there uh, since you're not even going to play, you know, pay off the friend thing later. Just have Kashala already in Arizona visiting the place where her tribe died in the 1800s. Um, you could already have her there, uh, you know. Um, so to me, that's what I'm talking about. And that's where editors need to come in and, and help, uh, you know, not rewrite the story for their writers, but help guide their writers to actually do something with their story as opposed to just, uh, well, we need a coffee shop scene. No, you fucking don't. <laughs> sorry, sorry for the swearing, but you don't need that scene. Um, but then you get a lot of narration where Kashal is basically telling you what Johnny Blaze has been through, uh, you know, for everything from Damnation to the King of Hell, when he became King of Hell, and then to, um, you know, Danny becoming um, the purgatory spirit and fighting off the, the evil inside Johnny and essentially curing him of the King of Hell title by giving it to Blackheart or whoever they or back to Mephisto, I think they gave it to. So it's like, okay, that's neat. And then the rest of the story is neat. Um, from there, and I'll, I'll kind of glaze over it from this point on so I don't like ramble too much. Um, most of the rest of the book is where I actually started liking it, where they go into Johnny Blaze's memories and you get to see him interact with his dad. Of course, it's not really his dad. It's a demon pretending to be his dad so he can get close to Johnny. Um, so there's, And they're also trying to get close to Kashala because, like I said, there's a, something connecting. I, Dr. Strange um, mentions to Kashala in the coffee shop, which I wish he didn't do that there. I wish he just cut to Arizona and did it. Um, Dr. Strange helped Kashala come to this time period because he, in his own book, he went and recruited a bunch of Sorcerer Supremes from e other dimensions and time periods, brought them all to the present to fight a threat. And Kashala got stuck here. She ended up staying in the present. So um, so he knows of her and her abilities, and he senses something in her in the Doctor Strange comic. And then you have here, you could have had Doctor Strange go, wait, I sense something in you, Johnny, that I recognize. He does do that, but he just says it all in the coffee shop, and it's very boring. <laughs> so, uh, so he wants to put Johnny and Kashala together on this dream quest kind of thing where they go into their memories to try to um, help Johnny in the corruption in his soul. But it turns out it's not a full corruption of just Johnny's soul. It's also Kashala. And so that was a neat twist. I like that. So you kind of go through. And I was thinking a villain like Nightmare or someone would kind of be behind this. But it wasn't, uh, unfortunately. It was uh, it was some spirit that 
look like Xerathos at one point, and Xerathos is a, a demon that's connected very much to the Ghost Rider lore, especially uh, the Dan Ketch run of the 90s and stuff. Um, so I kind of like that they did do their homework and research uh, as writers and in, imprinted and brought in stories from the past to tie into this, including Johnny meeting his younger self in a dream sequence, um, and then that uh, version of him as a boy getting turned into mist, joining the clouds, making it rain, and that rain cleanses Johnny of some of the corruption in his soul. I just thought that was very neat, very like Native American-esque, you know, where uh, where it kind of like everything is like, reincarnated as something else or everything, can, a spirit can be used to cleanse you. And I kind of just thought that was neat. I was like, oh, I like this. I'm really digging this whole sequence where they're going into their worlds and into their memories. And Johnny, you know, um, remembering a time with his mother. And then when Kashala's like, this is not your real mother, it's a demon. At this point, Johnny doesn't care. He's like, the dad thing, I, I know because we were fresh into this memory thing. I knew that wasn't really my dad. I kind of know this isn't my mom, but it doesn't matter because I never really got a lot of time with my mom. And I, I do want to have this time, even if it is a fake memory that a demon is using to lure me in. And she's like, I understand you want that, but if you let your guard down, this demon will get the one up on you. And so it does, and it takes. It seems like it takes the form of Zarathos. I don't know if it's really Zarathos here or not. Um, I, I, it could be. Um, Do, you know, Johnny certainly thinks it's Zarathos, but we find out that it's actually there's another demon called like a Leviathan, and that's actually the thing that uh, is here corrupting both of them. The crap thing is once again, uh, we don't get a battle between Johnny and Zarathos or Leviathan or whatever it actually is. Because right when they're about to fight, we cut to Kashala, and we just get all this exposition. And then, well, some great memory. Like, we go into her memories, which I like this part, where she sees, um, you know, how her tribe was killed and stuff by um, by a bunch of, like, cowboys or whatever, uh, f Civil War fighters or, I don't know, a group of men, uh, army guys, it looks like, uh, came in and this brigade took out her tribe. Um, so she remembers that. I'm like, okay, that's neat. But then we get this bullshit. Uh, how lazy. I mean, honestly, how lazy. We There's fights going on. Uh, editors and writer and artist, there are fights going on. What do you have against showing them? It's so ridiculous. So this is where my, my negative critique on the book comes in. Because I'm like give us something some of us like action <laughs> like and you got some cool elements here so we do get a little bit they do finally like the, after they waste two pages for no reason um we do get a little bit of the leviathan revealing itself and fighting kashala um but it's over pretty quickly and then i mean literally those two pages um and then she sees the spirit of her mother and says goodbye to her and her mother turns into the mist and cleanses her soul so now um kashala is is cleansed and so is johnny and so she's able to shrink the demon leviathan down and then eat it because she keeps running there's this running comment she keeps making through the book where she says the leviathan will eat her or the demon will eat her turns out in the end she has to ingest and eat the demon to prove her dominance over it or whatever so i guess the demon or leviathan still kind of in her somewhere but it's not like it has no power now i guess because she you know um, emasculated it or whatever she did by eating it, whatever the metaphors are here. Um, and then they return to Dr. Strange at the end and, and you know, and uh, Dr. Strange helps her open a portal to send Kashala back to her time period. So again, they set up her friends at the beginning and then here at the end, she's like, say goodbye to my friends for me. And you're like, what, what? then why have them there? Why have them at the beginning? Like, I don't know. Again, just page count. Like I always, as a former editor and and storyteller myself, like this is what I think about when I look at stories. Uh, I It's hard for me to sometimes just enjoy comics for what they are because I see, I have these questions, like why are they doing this? Like this doesn't make any sense. Pacing wise, art wise, story wise, um, you know, why waste, why do a whole pan, a page of just black? Like what a waste, or just an absolute waste. Um, it just felt very rushed. So towards the end, it got a little rushed and I didn't really like so much the story until she reveals in dialogue, I mean, in like exposition, that she is now something new. She's a spirit writer. She's not exactly a spirit of vengeance and she's not exactly a sorcerer supreme anymore, but now she's back in her own time period as a spirit writer and uh, and that she's going to be, She's it's important that she's in her time period because there's she has to, there has to be seven generations of her between where she is in her time period 
and the current period where Dr. Strange and Johnny Blaze are, there will be a you know six grandchildren of some kind, you know, or whatever, like six uh, people of her lineage, like directly from her offsprings that'll be like going down through the years, and that needs to happen. So she had to go back to her time period. So it was very important for her to go back there. And now she is cleansed and ready to go back to to do good in her time period. So the character is neat. I thought I've actually found her very interesting, Kashala, um, and I like what they did with her in this story. But I just hated some of those beats where you're just like, why? Why aren't you showing the action? I understand it's a spirit writer book and you want to focus on her and not Johnny Blaze. But then why set up these big battles with Johnny Blaze and then not show them? Especially when you could have and just cut some of that other crap out, you know, because I don't think her having coffee with her friends really got, you know, didn't help me get to really know Kashala that much more, uh, in my opinion, those pages. So to me, I would have just cut that and, and had a Johnny Blaze Doctor Strange fight for a page or two and then get into the Kashala stuff with her at her at the burial of her tribe in modern day. I just thought that all that could have worked still. Um, but just, you know, I, I don't know. I had some issues with it. So uh, so, you know, if you feel the same way, let me know if you read this. If you didn't, um, I do recommend going to pick it up for yourself, though. I thought there was good in this um, and I'm intrigued to see, you know, if they do anything more with this character of Kashala. I might check it out, especially if uh, Taboo and B. Earl write it, because I think they got a hold of this character. Like, I don't I don't remember fully what she was like in the Doctor Strange book when she appeared. I do remember reading it because it was one of those books that was on sale during a comicsology sale and I bought it and I was like, oh, OK. So I kind of knew of the character, but I don't know too much about her. This helped me understand her through her actions, not so much the coffee shop scene or some of the other stuff, but her and her memories, her and Johnny Blaze's memories, how she worked with Johnny Blaze. These are all things that help establish and build a character. And I thought all that stuff was handled really well in this book. And it made me intrigued in the concept of Kashala. So if they do more with her, maybe I'll talk about it on the show. And I think currently Johnny Blaze can now be seen from here in the Savage uh, Avengers book. So he dipped over into that book for a couple issues. So I'll read those and I'll see if they're worth talking about on this you know, channel, um, if they do anything interesting with them, because Savage Avengers has started off pretty neat and hooked me, but then it lost me really quickly uh, soon after that. So I'll check out the issues uh, when they go on sale. And if they're decent enough, I'll talk about them on the channel. But uh, we do have more Midnight Sun stuff coming up because the gameplay footage will be coming out in a few days. So I'll make sure that, you know, I'm ready for that. So Highway to Hell is still kicking. We've still got episodes to do. And maybe at some point since the show's still going, we'll talk about the Ghost Rider movies and maybe any appearances he's made, you know, outside of movies like cartoons, stuff like that. Maybe we'll talk about some of that or Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., things like that. So, um, yeah, so for now... That's all I got to say about Spirit Rider. Go pick it up, though. Uh, I highly recommend at least checking it out for yourself. I think it's worth owning if you're a Ghost Rider fan. Um, even if I have criticisms of it, I still feel like it was worth picking up for sure. Uh, but if you have a different opinion or the same, whatever it is, let me know down below. And as always, we'll continue the conversation down there. Thanks so much for watching the show. Like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff. And I'll see you in hell. Peace.